Norwich, a living medieval city, has a history of more than a thousand years. For centuries, the city has been shaped and influenced by foreign power, religion, and trade. The Romans, Saxons, Vikings, and Normans have walked on this land, and the trace can still be seen within the old city walls. In the 11th century, Norwich was the largest city in England after London, and still has the most medieval churches in Western Europe. Its geographic location also gave the city an importance for trade, both home and overseas. Its people still live with the medieval buildings standing beside them, many of which are being used for new purpose nowadays. The city was shaped in the Middle Ages. And that still influences people's lives here in the 21st century. I want to explore the old Norwich and feel for myself the weight of all that history. One of the earliest written references to Norwich was in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. It tells the story of Swain, the Viking king, who sailed up the River Wensen and burnt Norwich to the ground in the year of 1004. It's undeniable that outside power have had a huge impact on this place, and the earliest visitors, perhaps we know, were the Romans. This is Caister Saint Edmund, a place located three and a half miles to the south of the modern city of Norwich. During the Roman times, a town called Venta Icinorum was built here, right beside the River Thames. The word "caesta" means camp in Roman, and the ruins of the ancient walls can still be seen today. During the Roman period, the camp became a town and was probably used as a trading post, as Venta, the town's name, means market in Latin. But the main role of the town was probably regional administration, as the town was established just 60 years after the birth of Christ, very soon after Boudicca's rebellion against the Roman Empire was defeated. Many building materials used in Norwich during the Middle Ages came possibly from Caister, as the old rhyme suggested. Caister was a town when Norwich was known. Norwich was built with caster stone. After the Roman Empire fell apart, the Saxons invaded and drove the native British to the fringe area of Britain, like Cornwall, Wales, and Scotland. The number and locations of Saxon settlements in the Norwich area is still uncertain, even to academics. But there was a pagan Saxon cemetery. Found in the northern part of the city, where now is the Eid Road. More evidence is the Saxon name of this place. Although it's called Tomland, it has nothing to do with a grave or cemetery. The Saxon word Tom means open or empty, and this explains why the Tomland is the marketplace and city center of Saxon Norwich. Then came Vikings, the Danes. Who conquered East Anglia in 869? Evidence of Danish occupation also can be found from the names of places in Norwich nowadays. I'm walking on a street called Colgate. If you wander at the centre, you may find many place names ending with gate, such as Fishergate, Portergate, and Cowgate, where there is no gate around. This is because the word gate came from gata. Which is the exact word of "street" in the Nordic town. Apart from the street, this flint tower is also a work of Viking Norwich. The tower used to be a part of Saint Benedict's Church, but the church was bombed in the Second World War, and only this tower survived. What's special about it is the round shape, which is very unusual since most church towers are square. And this kind of round church tower has been found in all the countries surrounding the North Sea. 
a relic left by the Vikings. The Norman William, William the Bastard to his countrymen, became William the Conqueror when he was crowned king on Christmas Day in 1066. The Norman Conquest was the last time that England was occupied by a foreign power, and this conquest brought to Norwich its two most famous buildings, Norwich Cathedral and Norwich Castle. Norwich Castle is one of the finest Norman keeps in Europe. It was built as a royal palace during 1067 to 1075 and was the major castle that William the Conqueror built in the east of England. The castle is 90 feet by 108 feet and 70 feet high, making it the largest Norman keep in England. The stones used for building the castle came from corn in France. According to the Doomsday Book, 88 buildings was demolished to make space for the castle, including one church. The mound beneath the castle was too soft and needed to be extended, but this problem wasn't properly solved before the building work and caused the cracks in the east face of the building. The castle is shaped like a huge brick because it was used initially as a military fortress. But the grid for arcading on the facade of the castle was quite unusual for the military building. Once the castle was established, the boundary of a castle fee was marked out, and everyone living in the castle fee was directly under the king's jurisdiction. This caused a severe problem when all kinds of evildoers escaped into the castle fee to avoid arrest by the city authorities. The problem wasn't solved until 1345 Royal Charter when King Edward III gave all the land surrounding the mound to the city, bringing those evildoers to justice. By building up the castle, new boroughs or districts were set up, and the market was moved from Tomland to where it's located now, so that the castle could watch over it. As a result, the city center was relocated. Another landmark of the city is Norwich Cathedral. It's one of the finest Romanesque buildings also structured by the Normans. The builder was Herbert de Lusiga, who was also the first bishop of Norwich. He created a scandal when he paid King William II a great deal of money to be made the Bishop of East Anglia. Under the church law, this was a scene called simony. Then he obtained the absolution from the Pope when he went to Rome and built this new cathedral to remedy his guilt. The building work started with the East End in 1096 because this is where the high altar is located. It's the most important part of any church. Stones from corn in France and Roman camp at Caister were transported through this water gate called Pulse Ferry. Rubber was also collected from the local area, which was the same material used for paving straits. The spire is 315 feet high, making it the second tallest in England. The cathedral also has the largest surviving cloister in England. Book covers can be found at the northeast corner and washing facilities the southwest. These were built for 60 Benedict monks who got up at 2 o'clock in the morning and started their days with reading, washing, and prayer. Three bays can still be seen in the cloister. These were the entrances to the chapel house, which was destroyed during the Reformation. The cathedral once had a bell tower, but it was burned down in a riot between the cathedral priory and the citizens in 1272. The monks blamed the furious citizens for a great fire, but the citizens in turn blamed the monks as they were scared and dropped the torch on the roof. The cause might not be clear, but what can be sure is that there was indeed a fire. 
it also destroyed the church of St. Elphibert. The Elphibert gate we have today was a surviving part of the church rebuilt after the fire. It's believed that the pink stones in the walls of the cathedral and the gate are the evidence of the flame. The 1272 riot and the Reformation brought disasters to the churches in the city. But still, Norwich has the largest collection of medieval churches in the northern Europe. There is a saying that Norwich has a church for every Sunday and that was true because there were 60 churches in the city in the Middle Ages. Today, 36 churches remained. Among them, 9 are still used for worship, 3 are ruins, and the rest are in trust or converted for modern use. There are two possible reasons to explain why there are so many churches in the city. Firstly, Norwich was the second largest city in England. The larger the city is, the more people it has, and the more churches are needed. Second reason might be wealth, since the rich people built churches as an offering to the God and a shortcut to the heaven. This is all quite possible because Norwich was a religious center as well as a trading center. Norwich has a very important location on the map. The city is just 21 miles away from the east coast of England and served by a network of rivers. And it's not that far from London. Such a location made Norwich a major trading center both for London and the European mainland. The textile industry was quite flourishing in medieval Norwich. But it seems that Norwich didn't specialize in just the dyer or textile trade, because the city court rose from 1285 to 1311 record a mix of occupations including clergy, leather worker, textile worker, merchant, metal worker, and baker. Besides, a great deal of farmland was enclosed within the city walls, which might indicate that many citizens were farmers. People also had rights to graze in areas outside the walls, such as Eton and Lakeham. By late 13th century, worsted appeared. This is a kind of lightweight cloth which was in demand throughout England and overseas. The raw material was wool, and there was a large population of sheep around Norwich. A cattle market was in the city until the 1960s, located just beside the castle, now the place above Castle Mall shopping centre. But in the Middle Ages, the cattle market was on the street now called Hay Market. The Dyer Market was in the area of Maiden Market. Rampan Horse Street used to be the place for the horse market. The pig market was firstly located by Old Saints Green and later moved to Arfold Street, giving way to a timber market. If you look at the locations of all the old markets on the map, you will find that all of them, including the main market, were settled surrounding the castle. Trade and business must be conducted under the watch of the garrison, and the stability of trade was granted by the authority. Authority later settled in the medieval guild hall. King Richard I, known as Richard the Lionheart, gave his royal charter to Norwich in 1194. This granted that the city ruler were to be chosen by the citizens, not appointed by the king. In the 1285 royal charter, citizens were described as freemen, and only freemen can trade in medieval Norwich. The city walls and gates were completed in 1343, and two chairs were raised across the river. It seems that they were used not only to defend the city, but also to control the traffic and ensure a toll or tax was paid. 
A common mooring place was laid by beside Firebridge. All the sheep and bulls must load and unload here, and of course, have to pay the tax. The business was established on the basis of policy and must be controlled by the authority. Norwich Castle, as the symbol of the city authority, was used as a county prison from the 14th to 19th century. Now it has become the city museum and art gallery. Walking in the castle, you can feel both the bright and the dark sides of the building and the history behind it. The initial appearance of the city was formed during the Middle Ages. Many ancient buildings are still used for the purposes suiting the life in the 21st century. This is what I call the medieval heart of this ancient city, the heart that's still beating. Norwich is still the county city of Norfolk. The prosperity of trade in history laid the foundation for today's success in the retail industry. A modern cafe is right beside the medieval church. A tower of over a thousand years stands in the modern housing estate. All of this, the medieval and modern, standing side by side, together as landmarks, making the city of Norwich what it is today.